Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to day two of the Kubernetes Community Days Africa uh, event. We had a great day yesterday, awesome talks and great conversations that happened yesterday. And today we're going to be having more. Yesterday was mainly for tutorials and more deep dive uh, kind of content, while today is going to be more about talks, people sharing use cases, sharing experiences, sharing lessons they've learned, building different things. And we have quite a lot of great conversations that are going to be happening today. So stay tuned and join us throughout the rest of the day. You can view the link, uh, the video for yesterday. We have the recording for the whole event yesterday on our YouTube channel. Just search for KCD Africa. We'll be sharing the link subsequently. Then at the end of the whole event, we are going to break each of the uh, live stream into individual sessions so that you can watch them on demand on the KCD Africa YouTube channel. And we'll also be uploading it to the CNCF, uh, to the CNCF uh, channel also. Well, first introductions. I am Abubakar Siddiq Ango. Uh, developer evangelism program manager at GitLab and a co-organizer of the Kubernetes Community This Africa. And co-hosting with me is Anita. Oh, hey everyone. I am Anita Human. I'm a developer advocate and technical writer and an open source advocate as well. So it's good to see you all here once more. Yeah, awesome. Well, first, before we start, we have a very great uh, keynote that we'll be, uh, we'll be having in a couple of minutes. But before we start, we'd like to share some words from some of our partners. Now, we one of our partners is Localhost. Localhost is a DevOps SRE uh, cloud community previously known as DevOps Nigeria, and with members spread across Lagos, with Nigeria, Germany, London, and basically all over the world. And localhost will be hosting an annual conference uh, later this year, I think around November in Lagos, Nigeria, which you don't want to miss. It will be a convergence of cloud, DevOps, and SRE experts from across the globe. So. If you want more details, you can see the flyer on the screen, uh, bit.ly slash localhost conference. But we'll also be sharing a link in chat for the, for the conference. So make sure you go register and attend the event. It's going to be awesome, definitely. Though I'll be missing it because I'm not in GIA, so. <laughs> but you all should, should uh, go participate and be a part of it. Now, also, we let me share my screen. Also, one of our partners is DigitalOcean. And DigitalOcean, you might have been hearing about DigitalOcean. They provide affordable and efficient uh, cloud services. We are, we are we are here all talking about cloud, talking about cloud native, it is a digital ocean is one of the providers that you can use to achieve your infrastructure or your DevOps or SRE goals. And some of the services that the digital ocean provides are droplets, which are basically your compute instances, virtual machines that you can use to run any type of workload. I use digital ocean quite often and I'm also a digital ocean navigator. It's like a community of digital ocean and enthusiasts. So drop you can have varying type of droplets in different uh, locations. I know they have uh, uh, a data center in London. I know of New York. I know of uh, India. I've forgotten the time India. So depending on where you want to host your content, I personally use Amsterdam often because I'm close to Amsterdam. So you can get awesome compute instances on DigitalOcean. Now there's also managed databases, there's spaces. I love using spaces uh, because oftentimes I connect it to my uh, droplets like using uh, 
so it appears like a volume and I can back up my files seamlessly or, or uh, store logs, archive logs there. Also, we are all talking about Kubernetes. DigitalOcean has a managed Kubernetes service where it's awesome to use, it's seamless, and you can run your workloads. Now, other things that are provided are load balancers, block storage, and one-click apps. Sometimes you don't want to go through the stress of having to set up the virtual machine, install all the necessary services required, and so on before you deploy applications. DigitalOcean allows you to just click a button and it's deployed. Everything you need is deployed. So, and like I said, they have data centers across the globe, San Francisco, Toronto, New York, London, Amsterdam, Frankfurt. Yeah, Bangalore was the name I was looking for, and Singapore. So you can, which means you can put your workload in regions where uh, most likely closest to you. I think London and uh, Amsterdam are kind of closer. I think London is kind of closer to Nigeria in terms of undersea cable that run from Lagos. So you can definitely check it out. And uh, one of the good things of hosting your droplets in the same from experience, I'm a huge user of DigitalOcean, of hosting your instances in the same data center is you can enjoy private networking and transfer workloads between your instances without having to incur bandwidth costs of moving data across uh, different data centers. So you definitely check DigitalOcean out. And why do customers love DigitalOcean? Felicity, it's very simple. You just go in, click a few things, you have your droplets. Yeah, other cloud providers have a lot of services that they're providing. Right? Sometimes it can be like you are moving through a maze just to understand what is going on. You can, but with DigitalOcean, everything is very simple, very clean design, and you can have access to everything you need within very few clicks. Now, for these events, you can enjoy hmm, $100. $100 is not small money. $100 is like $60,000 now, uh, black market. <laughs> so you can enjoy a 60 day free trial to experiment with a lot of things. I think. One of the smallest digital ocean droplets is five dollars. So that's like you can have 20 droplets, create your nodes, run your cluster, costume clusters if you are trying to do something the hard way. So you can scan this QR code or use this URL. I'll be dropping the URL in the chat so you can try digital ocean out. If you have any question, you can ask in chat or you can join our uh KCD Africa channel in the CNCF Slack for more conversation. Yep. Um, so those are the messages from our sponsors. And um, shortly, we'll be starting our keynote. So how was your day yesterday? Well, we are here together yesterday, Anita. So I basically yeah. know how your day went. <laughs> <laughs> I think I went to bed immediately and left this chair. <laughs> uh, I I didn't because in the middle of the stream, uh, most the users didn't actually stay. I got some deliveries from IKEA. So uh, my daughter has been disturbing me. I bought a blackboard for her to be writing and doing other things. Even while the live stream was ongoing, she was busy disturbing me. Hey, daddy, let's fix it. I want to write. Oh, yeah. I, I <laughs> yeah. Up in the in the background yesterday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we spent, I think, uh, like an hour or two uh, setting the things up and uh, making sure it's uh, she's able to use it. And also, I she has a tablet. I set time limit on her tablet from twelve noon to nine p.m. What is nine p.m.? Or if she has used a total of six hours, she should just shut off. So she came, kept disturbing me. Her phone is not working. Her phone is not going right. You've passed your limit. It will not work. <laughs> that's cool, though. Yeah, like, because... That's really cool. Yeah, I need to reduce her screen time. She learns a lot, but if it's getting too much, it's it's, it's going to be bad. Yeah, so, uh, awesome. I think uh, that's enough of we catching up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I think we'll be proceeding with our keynote. Our keynote speaker is Edith Young. Uh, I think Anita, 
can introduce her better than I do. <laughs> okay, sure. All right, so um, today we have our keynote speaker who is going to be Edith Young. And if you don't know of Edith Young already, you should check Twitter because she's really popular on there. Yeah, she's a developer advocate at um, Ambassador Labs, and she is um, in when it comes to advocacy for um, open source projects and most cloud native technologies as well. So um, over to you, Edith Young. me can anybody hear me yes we can hear you clearly okay can you hear me well you know i was telling you about like the fan that i had to turn on <laughs> is it like sounding okay over there or do i need to turn it off yeah it, it sounds yeah, perfect it sounds you sound perfect oh okay that means the headphones is actually good awesome <laughs> all right cool um should i go ahead and start Okay, I guess so, since you guys are off. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. My name is Edidi Young Asipo. Um, but people call me Didi. I realized that Edidi Young is quite hard to pronounce. So if you cannot pronounce Edidi Young, then Didi is like the next best option. Um, so I am pretty much going to share my story, right? I'm going to talk about how I joined the cloud native ecosystem, um, my learning process, and how it has been so far. Um, I know this keynote speech is supposed to last for 15 minutes, so I will try to be as fast as possible, but then also include all of the <laughs> all of the details there. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, you can just drop it in the chat, and I will respond to them after I'm done with the quick story about my cloud native journey. Um, so it, used, it officially started when I used to work at this company called InterSwitch. Maybe, I can't remember the exact year, maybe like 2018, I think, or 2019-ish. I can't remember. I, I'm not sure of the exact year. But um, the company was like structured into different sections, right? There was the software engineering team, there was the DevOps team, there was like the marketing team and all of this stuff. So I used to work in the software engineering team. And then we had like different subsections as well. So each... Um, like software engineering department, so to speak, had like a DevOps person, right? So I used to work in the research and development software engineering team. And then so we had this DevOps person as well, who used to like help us with deploying our applications and just checking it to ensure that nothing goes wrong. And then I think we, we used to sit down close to each other. So you'd hear him often talk about like Kubernetes or um, Kibana or something is going wrong. And then it was just very interesting that it was also very interesting the way he explained it, right? And the way people would always come up to him and say, hey, can you help me fix this problem? My application is down. I cannot assess it anymore. I tried to do this. I tried to do that. And then just watching the thought process he usually followed to like implement or try to get your application back up. And then the excitement that came about after your application eventually came back up. So it just seemed like a very exciting thing to do, right? But I was like, okay. This is cool, and maybe someday in life I would eventually like transition into like learning about Kubernetes and all of those things. Because at the time I was just focused on web development. Um, so I mean, it didn't happen immediately. I went and I joined another company from Interstreet. I joined Hashnode and continued working in like the uh, web development space, of course, as a developer advocate and. Then, um, so I, I, I tie back to like KCD Africa, right? It was like KCD Africa event that happened in that year as well, when I I did an interview with Priyanka, right? It was, it was more of an AMA session. So I was asking her a couple of questions and then she was sharing the context with it. And then that was like the second time I had another encounter with like Kubernetes and Cloud Native through the um, first KCD Africa event. So it was just like reiterating the initial attraction I had to it at InterSwitch and having a conversation with Priyanka, just learning about her journey, the things she was doing, how she got into the open source space and how she also transitioned to Cloud Native was also very inspiring for me. And I, for me. And then I was like, um, uh, sorry, just give me one second. Can it seems, can people see me? It seems Abubakar is saying he can't see me. Oh, okay. It seems it's okay now. All right. So like I was saying, having the conversation with Priyanka was very like inspiring, right? And that just helped me to 
um, think about that initial attraction that I had to Kubernetes when I first heard about it at InterSwitch. And again, it just made me feel like, okay, maybe I should actually do this thing someday. But you know the fear that comes with moving from something you are very um, like comfortable with, right, to like something else. It's like very, very scary. So imagine maybe building yourself and being good to a certain level in the web development space. And then you know how to transition to like let's say let's say android development or cloud native it's it's very scary i don't know if any of you think it's scary but for me it was like literally going to start somewhere else as a beginner instead of continuing in the field that you've already um, like maybe build up to or like learned up to a certain level so i just kept like maybe whenever it came up i was just like now nah, i'll just like move it away and focus on what i was currently doing so um, the opportunity came to work at Ambassador Labs, which is my current company. And again, it just felt like maybe it was, you know, I don't know if any of you believes in fate, <laughs> but it just felt like it was, it was maybe fate, I think, because it, everything was just kind of aligning towards me moving to this field. From like the first pack at InterSwitch to like um, hosting the AMA session with Priyanka at KCD Africa. And then a job opportunity to um, like join the Kubernetes space, right? And then it was just like, okay, maybe I should actually try out this uh, like field and see how it goes. And um, the company was willing to give me like the first like first month to just focus on learning. So even when I joined Ambassador Labs, I didn't go straight up into like working immediately. It was just focus on learning about Kubernetes and other cloud native technologies to get like a certain a certain level of understanding, pretty much. And then eventually transition into working um, as a developer advocate in the cloud native space. So that's a quick summary of how I got into cloud native from the Spark to another Spark, I think, and then eventually making the decision. So I'm going to share my learning journey and how it has been so far. Um, so next week, Tuesday is actually going to make it officially one year since I uh, joined Ambassador Labs as soon as I transitioned into cloud native. So I'm going to talk through like, my learning journey and like um, how it has been so far, like the things I've been able to achieve, the things I'm looking forward to achieving and the struggles I've faced so far pretty much. So in terms of learning journey, um, like I mentioned, the first month at the company was just focused on learning. So I had, um, I, was, I was added into like the, more like I was merged with an engineering manager in the support team where he like pretty much like helped me understand things I was uncomfortable with. And then how it worked was well, like certain courses I need I needed to go through, certain things I needed to learn, right? And then after I learned those things, I would go back to him and say, hey, this is what I know now, this is what I'm struggling with. And it was just more like a conversation to get me up to a certain point where I was more comfortable. But in regards to learning, I think for me, what I did was try to be very specific with the things I wanted to learn. It's more like having a roadmap of like, what do I need to know to know this, right? So in order to fully understand Kubernetes, you need to understand containers, you need to understand microservices, you need to understand Docker before you fully understand how Kubernetes works. For other people, maybe they'll just jump straight into learning Kubernetes without all of these other things. But the way my brain works, I usually like to take things in steps. So it's like, I need to know this first and then move to the next thing because that would help me have like a better flow of, of that concept or that technology I was trying to learn. So what I did was try to like understand, I mean, I did have some fair knowledge of containers, but I just had to like go deeper into understanding what containers meant, um, diving into like microservices, then doing a couple of stuff with Docker and then eventually transitioning to Kubernetes. And then on the Kubernetes phase, I don't know if like, I, I'm sure most of you here know, Kubernetes is actually very, I mean, I would say it's actually maybe one of the most complicated things I have learned in the sense that there was just so many things to learn, right? So today I could probably start and then I know what Kubernetes is. I start learning about pods and then I've been able to like expose a pod and assess it externally. And then all of a sudden I'm happy. I'm like, yeah, I now know this. And then you realize you now need to also know about services because pods are not very efficient since they die, like since the um, their ID changes when they die. So you now learn about services you're excited that you know about service and how to make it work. And then you realize that, no, you also need to learn about deployment. So it was just a constant um, journey of being happy that I know this and then feeling that I don't know enough and then wanting to learn more. I don't know if anybody here has ever um, had the experience where 
you let's say you've always wanted to understand something or you want to reach a certain level but when you reach that level you now feel like i mean you don't you don't focus on the 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 um the positive part of reaching that level you are not like oh hey i need to reach the next step or i need i need like i have so much more to do so it was always like that for me and to be honest that's not the best way to think about it right it's always very important to like appreciate or um think about like the great things you've done to reach a certain level like think about those um awesome wins how you've been able to learn this and how you've been able to learn that instead of just focusing on like moving straight up to the next thing of course it's good to have a balance and like move on to reach a point where you are ov- overly like comfortable with the technology but i guess what i'm trying to say there is tailor your learning to what steps right think of where you want to um think of what you want to achieve and then I, I, right now break down break it down steps that will help you achieve that thing so instead of saying uh, let's let's use web development for an instance right so instead of saying hey i want to be um I want to be a web developer in like one month. Maybe, or let's say I want to be a web developer in like six months. That's like a, a good overall goal. But the ideal thing you should do is what do I want to do in like this specific month before it's up to six months? Do I want to be able to, let's say, build a web, like an HTML page first? Do I want to be able to like maybe know how to use CSS to do this? Pretty much tailoring your learning process just helps you feel better because when you can, um, when you can like tie down the little wins, so instead of saying, um, I want to be an expert in Kubernetes. I want to know every single thing in Kubernetes. It could start with, I just want, I want to be able to just deploy an application to Kubernetes, right? And then when you eventually reach that point, you're like, okay, hey, I can do this. There was a time in your life where you literally didn't know what Kubernetes was or how to even do any of those things. So you can then focus on that like win that you have and it will just pretty much make it um, better for you. So in addition to breaking down the things I needed to learn. Another thing I tried to do was like um, share my learning journey or process in public. I mean, I didn't do I didn't do it as much as I wanted to. I actually wanted to be like maybe tweeting about it every time, writing so many articles about it, right? But then I didn't do as much as I wanted to, to be honest, but I, I tried to some certain level. Um, I believe that writing you know, or like sharing knowledge is always a great way to reinforce your learning even though people think of it as hey i'm writing to teach this person or i'm tweeting to teach this person it also helps you understand something a lot better right because in order for you to fully explain something for someone else to understand it means you need to understand it very well so in every process or in every time you're trying to write an article or learning in public you're pretty much helping yourself become better at that technology right before helping the other person so I really I tried I tried to do that as much as I could. Um, I didn't do it. I, I I didn't reach the level I wanted to in terms of like being very open with like my learning journey. But I mean I tried, <laughs> and that's all that matters. It's better than doing nothing. And the final thing I did in terms of learning was be very keen in asking questions. I understood that this was a field that I was new in, right? Uh, I mean with the imposter syndrome of leaving web development and coming here, it was like. I was starting tech all over again. I was just starting tech for the first time. You know how that feeling where you feel um, very clueless about so many things. So that's pretty much what how I felt. And I knew that one way to overcome that was to like ask people questions. And thankfully, I had like a lot of people in my support system who were willing to answer questions from like my friends, my manager at work, the uh, manager I worked with in the support team, my devil manager, Daniel. They were like, a lot of people that I could always ask questions to. I even reached out to people on Twitter as well, including Siam, like so many of them. And then I just knew that it was okay to ask questions. I, I was comfortable with l- looking dumb to somebody just to understand what I needed to understand. And I think that's a very um, important thing for us to note because you can't always know everything, really. And you need to be very open or willing enough to like ask people questions, be open to like saying, hey, I don't know this thing, but I want to know this thing. Can you help me reach a certain point? And I think those three things were generally what helped me reach a certain level of understanding like Kubernetes and cloud native technologies. Of course, I still have so much more to learn, but three things, breaking down my learning journey, what I needed to do to get to a certain point, um, learning in public and also asking questions really helped me um, 
reached a very um, comfortable point in my uh, my cloud native journey. And of course, I'm still looking at learning learning more. Yeah, so that's all for a learning journey. And then, uh, like I mentioned, next week's teaser is going to make it one year. So I just I just want to um, maybe look back on like some things that I have been able to do. And then I think the reason why I'm saying this, the reason why I'm saying this is because I want you to know that it's it's okay to transition to a new field. It's okay to come into the cloud native ecosystem. Trust me, there are like so many people who are like willing to help you get to that point that you want to be. There are people sharing knowledge on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on on like YouTube. There is like the the Kubernetes Slack channel as well, which will pretty much um, help you like get up to speed in your cloud native journey. So. Um, some of the key highlights, some of the things that I've done in like one year is, I think the coolest one for me is speaking at KubeCon, um, like we just concluded at KubeCon. It was absolutely fantastic because I remember I joined, I joined the cloud native ecosystem, let's say three or four months before the, like I experienced the first KubeCon and it was just exciting to see people speak at the event and just like share knowledge. And for me, who is someone who's always loved to share knowledge, it was really nice to be given that opportunity to speak at one of the, I think it's the biggest Kubernetes and cloud native conference in the world. It was like literally one of the best things that happened. And that I also um, um, passed my CCAT exams. So CCAT exams is a certification by the um, Linux Foundation and CNCF. Pretty much helps you like reinforce your learnings or just look through things that you've not really understood. It was like a great learning process for me as well. It helped me learn a lot of things that I did not know prior to like practicing or preparing for the exams. And just having the certification was also um, a good feeling to have. It also helped me remind, like it reminded me that, yeah, I did start sometime last year, but I now knew enough to be able to like pass a certification exam that a lot of people have taken over. Um, a lot of people have taken over the past years. So that was really nice for me. And then at the company that I've worked with, hosted a couple of Kubernetes workshops, written a couple of articles that are centered around cloud native and Kubernetes. And we've just um, been at the point where we're like sharing knowledge about different things. And I have participated in all of those things. Of course, sharing knowledge is great to teach other people, but again, it also helps you um, become a better person at the thing you're learning or just become a better communicator in terms of passing knowledge and all of that. Um, so that's a quick summary. I don't know if I've passed 15 minutes or I'm close to 15 minutes, but in summary, um, I joined the cloud native ecosystem last year and it's almost going to be a year and it's been a fantastic journey. I have had so much to learn. I still have so much more to learn, but the community, the members of the community have been very supportive. And if you're also willing to transition to cloud native or just kickstart a new field in tech as someone who is in like DevOps or like a cloud native engineer or a Kubernetes engineer or whatever field you want to focus in the cloud native space, it is absolutely possible for you to do that. And in order for you to do that, I would recommend that you try to learn in public because it helps people know that you're now in that space. Like prior to Kubernetes and cloud native and DevOps, I used to talk about like web development and technical writing a lot. And if I wasn't very intentional about like sharing my my learning experiences on Twitter or something, you probably still think I am still doing web development and I'll most likely not be giving this keynote speech today. <laughs> so I absolutely recommend learning in public. And I know that some people think that maybe they're not smart enough to share something online or they don't really have a lot of information that other people have. But I love to use this analogy that imagine if you've been in a certain tech space for one month, right? There are people who have been in that same space for two weeks or maybe just one week. And the information you have as someone who has been there for one month will be very beneficial to someone who are uh, who who has just joined let's say like one day ago or one week ago and your information can be very useful to that person other than that as a beginner in a certain field there's certain context that you have that an expert might not have so you most times you'll be able to explain things in a way that other people can easily relate to as opposed to an expert who assumes that people may already know that thing. So I'm very keen on like sharing your knowledge in public is absolutely fantastic. Great, gives you great opportunity and also helps people in the ecosystem know that you're not part of the, like you're not part of like cloud native or you're doing like things around um, cloud native technologies. So yeah, um, thank you. I hope that um, 
maybe you've realized that it's absolutely okay for you to join the cloud native space. It's fantastic, has lots of opportunities, and it's literally just waiting for you to join and help in spreading the word as well. Thank you. Oh, that was a great story, Didi. <laughs> yeah, and um, it's always inspiring to actually hear your journey because I think we started this journey like about the same year and you have done really, really amazing things. We did. So, <laughs> <that one. laughs> 